Hello friends, welcome to TechGoology. Today we are going to see how to install ELK stack on Ubuntu systems. For those who are new to ELK stack, ELK stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana. Elasticsearch is a search and analytics engine. Logstash is a server-side data processing pipeline that uh, lets you ingest your data and then process it and then store it into Elasticsearch. Kibana is a visualization engine where you can visualize all your data stored in Elasticsearch. So let's get started today. Uh, I'll follow all the uh, installation steps uh, listed by the Elasticsearch itself. So they have mentioned an order uh, in which you have to install all these three components. And first we will have to install the Elasticsearch. I'm going to follow all the instructions listed here, but I'll also add some of the instructions. Uh, which you require for the SSL. So I'm going to open this link and I'm going to open the Debian package link. And here we have some of the instructions. So before we continue further, uh, I have already created a machine on Azure uh, with Ubuntu operating system. I have already whitelisted 5601, 9200 and 80 port. Uh, I'll let you know uh, during the tutorial why I have whitelisted these IPs in the Azure firewall. Okay, so let's get started. I'll first switch to the root user and then I'll perform an update. So this is complete and now I'm going to copy and paste all the commands listed in the Elasticsearch tutorial. So let's copy all of them one by one. So I have also copied the Elasticsearch command and it might take some time to install. Okay, so our installation of uh, Elasticsearch is complete. And as you can see, there are some security auto configuration information uh, listed on your screen. This all uh, configuration you need to copy and paste in any of your favorite notepad application so i have also copied it on my notepad plus plus here okay and uh, if you see here uh, we have some commands list listed in the bottom which are which are there to reload the elasticsearch service in system ctl and then uh, start this service in system ctl okay so i am just uh, going to uh, copy and paste all these three commands into my elasticsearch into my ubuntu machine and uh, uh, it might take a little uh, while to start the Elasticsearch. Uh, uh, it happens every time whenever I uh, restart the Elasticsearch as well. And this is quite common. Okay, so Elasticsearch is started. And now I am going to cut the local host 9200 port. And if you see, we have received an empty reply from server. This is because Elasticsearch is by default started in HTTPS mode. Okay, so I am going to call uh, localhost with https and i am also going to provide hyphen k uh, switch to curl so that it can load the untested certificates as well okay so uh, i have also created a dns in azure and i am going to call this dns in my web browser with 9200 port and that is why i have whitelisted a 9200 port in azure firewall so that i can access 9200 port for elastic search and if you see i am getting the empty response here and this is the same as we have received in the localhost because I am currently opening in HTTP mode. So let's open in HTTPS mode and let's see if it opens this for us. And as you can see, we have an untested certificate installed in Elasticsearch. The Elastic credentials are already present in the information that we copied earlier. And I can just copy paste the same credentials here. And my Elasticsearch is up now. So before we move forward, we will need to set up the Kibana system user password also because we are going to connect our Kibana instance to the Elasticsearch. So I'm going to copy the same command listed in the information there and I'm going to give the user as Kibana system. Okay, so the command is Elasticsearch hyphen reset hyphen password, then hyphen u is the switch and Kibana system is the username. So the uh, password that is changed here, I am going to copy and paste on my notepad again. The same behavior can be achieved also with the APIs, uh, but I am doing it here because I don't want to call the any APIs further. 
and as soon as I uh, implement the SSL here, I, I won't be able to use this directly. Okay, so uh, for the SSL, I'm going to install the cert board. For those who are newer to cert board, cert board is an application which you can use to generate certificate through Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a website which provides you the free SSL certificates. These certificates are short lived, which means that they will be living for only 90 days and after that they will expire. But don't worry, we also have some procedures to renew this certificate and you can renew any certificate as long as you want. The certificates which are generated by the Let's Encrypt are tested by the browsers. Uh, so for this, let's first install the certboard command. So I am going to call this get install certboard and it is now installed. Uh, so first we will try to run a dry run with the certboard because if we uh, because if we exceed the chances that we have for website, uh, then certboard won't let us generate any certificate for the day and we will have to wait for some time to uh, retry the certificates. Okay, so I'm uh, so the number of attempts that we can try are five and if we fail all the five attempts, then we won't be able to generate a certificate for the day. Okay, and uh, okay, so I'm going to call the cert board cert only hyphen hyphen dry hyphen run command so that I can test if my cert board command is running fine for my provided DNS. For the certificate generation purpose only, I have whitelisted the port 80. Why? Because when you uh, run this command, it will ask you to spin up a temporary web server or you can provide some files in your own web server. But in our case, I am going to uh, ask Sadbot to run a temporary web server. It will be running a temporary web server on port 80. That's why I'm, I have already whitelisted the port 80 in my Azure firewall. Uh, just we need to uh, enter the one for the temporary web server standalone mode. I need to provide my email ID. I need to accept all the terms and conditions and then I need to copy and paste my domain name. Okay. And as soon as I enter, if everything goes fine, it will tell me that the dry run was successful and then I can now try with the actual certificate process. So again, the same thing, provide a temporary web server, select one, provide your email IDs. And then provide your consent and then uh, and then accept the terms and conditions and then you can opt out from any of the events uh, from the let's encrypt and then you can just press enter with your domain name if everything goes fine again then you will get your certificates here uh, it has also mentioned the directory where it has placed your certificates okay so what i need to do now for Elasticsearch, if your certificates are not present in the Elasticsearch directory, you won't be able to use them. So I need to copy and paste the certificate listed in the important notes above to the Elasticsearch directory. So I'm going to cd to the Elasticsearch directory and I'm going to create one folder with name SSL and I'm going to copy both the certificates which is certificate and private key to this folder. And for now, I am going to just ch mode triple seven to this SSL folder. But in later on, you can just set the permissions as per your convenience. Okay. So I have uh, done all the copy and paste of certificates there. Now I need to uh, edit the Elasticsearch.yml file. I scroll down to the place where you see the expect.security.ssl. You just need to remove the key store dot path from here, and you need to enter the key and certificate values that we have just copied. So you have to enter the path here. Okay, so I am just copy and pasting the path here for both private key, which is our key and full chain, which is our certificate. And then I am going to just save it. And then I'm going to restart the Elasticsearch with system CTL restart Elasticsearch. And now if I reload this page or I just copy and paste this URL into a different tab, then I can see that my Elasticsearch is loaded with proper HTTPS configuration. And if you even see the certificate, you can see the certificate is valid for three months. Okay. So this is uh, all uh, for the Elasticsearch installation. Let's now move to the Kibana installation. I'm going to the same page where we have listed the uh, steps to install one by one. And then I have just, I'm just going to the in install with Debian package. Again, I'm going to copy and paste all the commands that we have here to my uh, machine, which will uh, uh, install everything. 
that it requires for a perfect installation okay so i'm just copy and pasting everything there let's now copy and paste the kibana installation as well kibana installation takes a bit more longer than the elastic search but restart takes less time or than the elastic search okay so it is now installing and it has already installed it now i am going to again go to the kibana directory and i am again going to create a ssl folder for the ss for the ssl for kibana it's not mandatory to create a folder under kibana as well but uh, for the ease and for the remembrance purposes i am going to copy uh, and paste all the certificates into their respective directories so i have created a folder inside slash etc slash kibana and uh, the name folder name is ssl and then i am going to copy and paste all the certificates that we have previously generated the same certificates that we generated previously uh, to this directory i am again going to do ch mod triple 7 to this folder and you can again uh, generate any kind of kind of permissions as per your convenience i am going to uh, edit the kibana.yml file and we have to change many uh, properties here so first is the server.host we have to give it a value of 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0. Next, we have to configure the public base URL and this URL will be the uh, DNS name of, of your uh, server. Okay. So for us, it is HTTPS colon slash slash and the uh, and my DNS. So I have pasted it here. And then I am going to enable the SSL here. So inside the system Kibana server settings, I am going to enable SSL and then I am going to copy and paste the paths here that we have where we have currently copied the of certificates and key okay so uh, let's just paste the paths here okay so after this I need to just configure the elastic search or uh, credentials and elastic search URL so in, inside the elastic search section I am going to copy and paste the elastic search URL that we have generated previously and then I am going to uh, change the elastic search username and password and here we have to use the kibana system as user and password that we have already generated okay you cannot use elastic user here because kibana won't let you do this so that's why you have to generate a credential for kibana system user okay so let's just restart the kibana system uh, system ctl restart kibana and let's see if everything goes fine Kibana by default runs on 5601 port. That's why I have whitelisted the 5601 port in the Azure firewall. So if I just reload the Kibana URL, then I can see that my certificate is valid and Kibana is also running fine. For login into Kibana, you need to just use the elastic username and password and after that you can create any type of usage that you want inside Kibana. Okay. So we are done with the elastic search and Kibana installation. Let's now proceed with the log stash installation. So log stash installation, it is not something that you should install every time. This depends on your requirement. If you need to uh, ingest logs on the server side and then you want to process it there then you can install logstash but it is not necessary to always process your logs with logstash even filebit can uh, process logs at the client side and then send it to the kibana server so that depends upon your requirement but anyways we are still going to see how to install the logstash so i'm again going to go to my elastic stack installation steps and then i am going to open the debian based uh, package installation there uh, for the logstash again if you go there you have this installation from the package uh, again there are some steps that you can uh, copy and paste to, into your ubuntu machine one by one i'm going to do the same again and and now you can see that our log test has started its installation Logstash installation takes a bit of time to complete and it should be done now. Yeah, so it has done now. And for Logstash, you can just try on your own that if you try to ingest something in the logs, 
uh, it will process and it will show you into the Elasticsearch dashboard. But that depends on your configuration and your purpose that you want to use it. Uh, for today, I am not going to do anything with Logstash log because everything is already done with Logstash if you install there. In some of the next tutorial, I will try to show you how to uh, use Logstash, how to run a pipeline and how to ingest logs into Logstash. For now, that is it from my side. If you think I have missed something in the Elasticsearch, Kibana and Logstash installation, then let me know. If you have any confusions in the Let's Encrypt and Search board or any other thing, then also let me know. If you have any confusions in any of the DevOps processes that we follow today and any of the software, then do let me know. I will be happy to create any kind of tutorial for them. If you like this video, then don't forget to rate, comment, share and subscribe my YouTube channel. Stay tuned.